Dave Palumbo here with Muscle Serpents Daily, and it is Monday morning here, guys, and I got my albino Burmese python head for pie here. She's getting big and putting on some nice size. Figured I'd give you guys a little update on that. And I'm in the snake room here cleaning, and we're gonna take a look and see what's going on. You know, it is in the middle of the breeding season. Uh, the last couple of videos we've done, we've got some cool action. We've seen some locks, we've seen some, some ovulations, we've seen some, you know, water ball wrapping in the ball pythons. So they say, I don't know what I'm gonna see today. We're, you know, Monday morning is an exciting morning. You come in here and we'll see what's going on. So um, I'm also gonna possibly, you know, give you guys an update on the olive python situation. I have not seen any locks or any breeding behavior. I might put a male in with the female, uh, excuse me, I might put a male in with the two, I might put two males together and do a little more combating to see what we can uh, get going and maybe initiate a little breeding behavior. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me about that. I feel like a real failure when people ask me about, how's the olive python breeding project going? I'm like, well, it's a project, but it's really not going anywhere. So I don't know if, it's, if we can really call it a breeding project. But yeah, I, you know, I cooled them down, obviously. I've been trying to combat the males every once in a while, every maybe four days or five days. And I'm gonna try it again today. We'll see what happens. We'll see if we get any action. And hopefully one of these days we're gonna come in, we're gonna see those tails locked and, and we're gonna be really super psyched. So let's uh, check out what's going on here and uh, hopefully we'll find something cool. All right, here we go. We're gonna do some more combating. This is uh, the Olive Python Project part. I don't even know what part we're up to, but there, we're gonna grab that albino male. We're gonna put him in once again and see if we can get some breeding behavior. Our uh, female, I still haven't seen any locks. It doesn't mean it's not happening. I just haven't seen any yet. All right, there we go. We got some male wrestling behavior, some combating going on. The one male wants to get out of the cage already, but let's see, hopefully he'll stay in the cage. I just have the door open so that I don't get the glare from the glass. This is just for your purposes. I normally would have the cage closed, but then once again, we want to keep an eye on them. We don't want anyone to get hurt. So they're kind of entwined here, the males. Once again, the green one is the head albino male. And then this, this one right here in the front here is the other male, the thinner one. The female's the, in the back there. She's a little bigger. So they're being a little civilized, but now you see now they're wrestling together. They're kind of gripping each other and kind of almost wrestling with each other with the muscle, the musculature of their body. And it's when they start trying to bite each other, that's when you gotta take them out. It's funny, this head albino male is usually really mellow, but when you put another male in there, he gets really aggressive and so you gotta watch it. Oh, there he goes, he did it. All right, I gotta take him out. All right, I got Nick here, my, my buddy, helped me clean. As you can see, the guy, he bit, but then he let go, so he's not biting anymore, so I'm not panicking too much yet to get him out. I'm gonna get him out though, because I think he's gonna go bite. But you can see, look at him twined up. See how entwined they are? This is male combat at its finest. I mean, it doesn't get any, any better than this. This is documentary style male combat. We just don't want anyone getting bit. Um, so here's, I don't know who I'm gonna leave in. I think I'm gonna leave the, uh, the head albino male that was in there already. And hopefully he's, he's now juiced up and he wants to go do some breathing, you know. So we'll try to get this albino male out if we could, if we could get these guys. He really has them coiled up pretty good. I'm gonna probably have to get it with my hand and hopefully not get bit. Look, now the female in the back, that's the female right here. She's getting involved now. She's like, what's going on here? Right, we gotta get this guy out of there. Right. Keep, keep filming, Nick. Never turn the camera off. Because <laughs> I could get bit and people are gonna wanna see that. Um, we just, I just don't like the thing. He's got him really coiled really tightly, so I may have to get in there. Now the smart thing would be to put my glove on right now, but I'm not gonna do that. All right, let's go. He's got really pretty, pretty, well. pretty good. He's got a pretty good squeeze on him. I want to get that off the guy. Right, I may have to get in there with my gloves, Nick. Keep filming. Give me, give me the stick. Give me the stick on. Oop, oop. Yeah, that's a, that's a strong. That's a strong construction. You want to release that? Do it. Let's just keep. Going. Okay. That's why you have to supervise. You never leave olive pythons alone to do male combat. Okay. We got to move this. Alright, go green now. <laughs> you, you exerted your dominance. 
That was about as cool as it gets. Let's make sure this male is okay. He didn't get bit, really. He got squeezed more than anything, so he's, he's okay. Are you okay, big boy? Yeah, you're all right. All right, once again, that's the key. You put them in, as soon as they start going at it, you pull them out. That's the key with all pythons. You do not leave them in. You don't want anyone getting killed, no damage. The males are up, it's serious business when these guys are breeding. Unfortunately, this male obviously wants to dominate this male, but he's not breeding my females. I don't know why. We'll find out. Let's see if this does it. We'll put this guy back. All right, I'm putting the blue tongue skinks together for the first time this year. I wintered them this year for the first time. Let's see if anything happens. They haven't really eaten much since I've warmed them up. Here's my albino male with my azanthic female. Hopefully trying to make some double head snows. <laughs> if all goes well. You know, it's, it's, it's intimidating when you've never done this before because it's not like snakes, I, you know. I don't know what to expect. You gotta keep an eye on these things because they can bite each other and hurt each other as well. Skinks, you know, breeding is, you don't just leave them together and, and go, you know, go shopping, you know, they'll kill each other. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what they do and how they respond to each other. Seems like the, the male is kind of a little interested. I don't think the female is looking too receptive, but you never know. I put them in this big tub, neutral corners. Female's trying to get out already. No, you gotta go back down there. You gotta get back in there, buddy. I think you gotta just get the rhythm now. I don't know. I, I just think that I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> he looks like he's uh, he's more alert than I've seen him. Maybe he's interested in this female. Yeah, you're not coming out of here. You're going back in. Go make some babies. Go make some babies. Right, I'm trying a different pairing. I'm going to try my albino with this northern blue tongue female I have. I only have four blue tongues, period. So I got two females and two males. So let's see what happens. I'm just going to keep chronicling this and see if I can get any breeding behavior. And maybe I can give you some insights into what I'm doing. All right, I'm just going to showcase two of my favorite animals from the 2019 breeding season. These are, of course, boas, and they're leopard motleys. And when you combine the motley gene with the recessive leopard gene, you get a solid pattern snake. It's, it's pretty black. It's almost like a charcoal or chocolate-looking uh, black snake with just maybe a little, a little hint of pattern, but it's really patternless essentially. And they got that beautiful leopard head, the dark eyes. And these are two of my uh, males that are for sale on my, on Morph Market. And a couple people have asked me to take some updated pictures. Obviously they've grown quite a bit. They probably doubled or tripled and probably tripled in size since I put them on Morph Market. And these are my two darkest ones because the person who had inquired wanted to know the darkest ones I had and the most solid pattern ones. And this is probably the two of them. Once again, that leopard and motley gene are just amazing. And the great thing about these snakes is that they're 100% head albino. That's right. I've seen a bunch of people who have produced these and they were 50%, but these are 100% head albino. The, the mother was albino, motley, a head leopard. So we know 100% sure you can produce albino eclipses with these guys. And they'll be ready to breed next season for sure. You know, They're really good eaters. I've been feeding them really you know, slowly. You know, as I do most of my boa babies, and they—I don't think they've ever turned down a meal, live, frozen, thawed. <laughs> Very inquisitive. So, these are the albino, or I should say, the motley leopard, also known as Eclipse, head albinos. This is a double head leopard albino, and as you can tell, the head leopards have very, very visual cues. You can see it many times. Bow tie saddles, um, just different look to them. This is a really beautiful looking one. Once again, I got them on Morph Market. This is 100% Kala Albino, 100% Het Leopard. Interesting head spears, just beautiful looking tail pattern. 
very affordable. You know, if you can't afford to do the Eclipse head albinos, obviously you can you can produce some really cool stuff with these uh, double hats as well. And once again, you can see they're getting bigger. I mean, they're all, these males will all be ready to breed next year for sure. Like I said, they're putting on a nice size and I'm feeding them, keeping them nice and lean. And it's funny, I, I found out for the first time, I have this really small um, male boa that I bred this year, it was 2017. Definitely old enough to breed. He's the smallest guy and he is such a good breeder. I'm so stupid for <laughs> like my males get bigger. I mean, my males breed well, I don't get them too big, but it's funny that it, age is, is sometimes more important. And if they're really lean, they like to breed a lot. But um, once again, really nice looking snake. A lot of interesting looking pattern here. Also, most of it coming probably from the head leopard. All right, I thought I'd just show off this uh, snake because it's so cool looking. This is my lavender clown. Also known as the Grail, as Justin Gabuka <laughs> named it. Uh, I got this in a, in a trade, actually. This female is eating nicely, growing nicely. Hopefully, maybe maybe next year she'll be ready to breed. I don't know. You never know. She doesn't go on a hunger strike. Once again, that lavender albino um, combined with the clown morph. I get that lavender clown. I, don't, I haven't even decided what I want to breed her to. You know, most people would say, oh, let's just make more lavender clowns, but... Yeah, I, I think I want to put something else in there and like try to make some cool hats, you know, and bring some more diversity into this because, you know, I don't want to do the same thing that everyone's already done already. So I got some time to think about it, what I want to mix her into. But look at that, just really nice looking uh, contrast there. Obviously, the albino clowns look cool, but the, the lavenders just have like, uh, you know, that white. It's hard to pick it up in this. Um, in this video, but the white is just much more lavender, especially when they're first born. Really nice. Look at that head stamp. Just a lot of cool coloration in there. Lavender albino, just, uh, you can't go wrong with it. And the darker the stuff you mix into it, the better it looks. So that's probably what I'll be looking to do. Maybe mix some hurricane into this. Black pastel, that kind of, those kind of morphs do really, really well with the lavender albinos. All right, let's 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 wrap today up. I know that I just gave you a hodgepodge of stuff today, but this is my Paradigm Blood female holdback from 2019. She's putting on some nice size. Once again, the Paradigm is the sharp albino combined with the Boa Woman Caramel T-positive on the same allele. It creates that creamy looking intermediate. I've said it five million times, but I'm gonna keep saying it because there's always someone who's watching and doesn't know what it is. And then also you add the blood regime. So it's a double recessive, essentially. Look at that eye. Eyes says it all right there. Look at that. Creamy, brownish, tannish eyes. I love it. And she's got a lot of nice stuff going on in her body there. And she'll be a really nice breeder, you know, a couple years from now. But I figured I'd hold back. I have, I have once again, the dad is a, a visual paradigm blood male. I, I didn't really have a, I have a female, but she's a little, a little runty. So I don't know when she'll ever breed. So I'm going to hold back this girl too, just because I just love the paradigm blood combination. It's just gorgeous. And once again, I, I do have some males for sale. Visuals. I have some hats, double hats. If you guys want to get a pair, let me know. All right. Let's uh, let's check out those all pythons, see if we got any breeding action. All right, that's going to do it for today, Monday morning here at uh, Muscle Serpents Daily. And uh, as you can see in the backdrop there, my albino olive python has not been bred. The male is not, not even on the same side of the cage as her. So that's a disappointment after the combat we did. Uh, they have no interest in each other. But I'm going to leave them together for another day or so. Then I might put the other albino male in with her to see if maybe they do better together. So look, the albino... And the Olive Python project in general is ongoing. I'm not giving up hope. We're still in February here. Hopefully we'll get some breeding action. Guys, if you like what you're seeing, make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications, hit that like button. And guess what? I'll be back 